I'm just gonna say it, 2023 was an absolutely terrible year for Hollywood. There were some highlights for sure, but most of these movies, especially during the summer, were just uninspired cash grabs with no good stories to tell. Now, as always, I have not seen all the movies that came out in 2023, so movies like Peter Pan and Wendy, Wish, and The Exorcist Believer, I haven't seen them, so they won't be making this list. Although Peter Pan and Wendy was so bad in its opening 10 minutes that me and my brother went straight to watching the original animated movie. So that says everything about that movie right there. And the budget was 170 to 200 million dollars plus. Yeah, great investment there, Disney. So, let's get this top 10 list started. Number 10. Extraction 2. Now the first Extraction was a good film, and it was adapted from a graphic novel. The novel didn't have a sequel however, so Netflix had to commission an original script. And boy does it show, because the story, the pacing, the characters, it all felt like it was in much less capable hands. Which, it wasn't. It was written and directed by the same people. The first movie was no masterpiece, but the story was simple, I liked the characters well enough, and it had some decent writing. Extraction 2 on the other hand feels like one of those old straight to video sequels. It just felt so cheap. The character development was poor. Chris Hemsworth character, who was very likeable in the first film, felt completely flat here. His character arc should have been interesting, but instead was just sleep inducing. He was nowhere near as likeable, and to top it off, the villains completely sucked. This bad guy just had that one same expression on his face the entire movie, and I didn't even care for Hemsworth to fight him. Also, the family he has to protect, I didn't care about them either. And later on, there were big plot revelations that just didn't make any sense. This whole damn story doesn't make any sense. And this kid, this stupid, stupid kid, the amount of people he got killed for being stupid just got me angry. So much so that I was rooting for him to die. Now the movie had good action, but I didn't think it was as good or memorable as the first movie. And the terrible story and characters we had to sit through just didn't make the action worth it once we finally got to it. And aside from a few cool shots, even the look of the film seemed very dull and mediocre. With the action in the first film, I went back to re-watch some of them. I did not feel like doing the same with Extraction 2. As soon as the movie was over, I just wanted to get out of there and never go back. The terrible writing especially surprises me because it was written by the Russo brothers, and I find it hard to believe that the ones that gave us such memorable motivations of characters in their MCU movies would end up writing these disposable characters. Such a disappointment, and it definitely takes a spot on this list. Number 9. Transformers Rise of the Beasts I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm seriously done with these Transformers movies and these boring human characters. I was fine with it in the first three movies, and even Bumblebee did a good enough job with its human characters. But even then, I kept saying, I want to see something different. I want a live action movie where we see the war for Cybertron. The opening two minutes of Bumblebee is what I want to see for the whole movie. But instead, we keep getting recycled crap like this with boring human characters. And I do mean recycled. A lot of the beats from Shia LaBeouf's character in the first Transformers Transformers is copied and pasted in this movie, and the effects were so uninspired. Seeing the Transformers transform in the previous movies was so fun, but this is the first movie where it looked boring, to the point that it made me go back to the first movie just to double check. And after all this time, the transforming effects were still so mesmerizing to watch, and you could see the sweat, blood and tears that the VFX artists put into these effects, which were a real challenge back in the day. But in the new movie, the transforming effects were just passionless. And even the green screen in this movie was so bad. Again, even the first movie had much better green screen, and that was back in 2007. What is with 2023 movies having such shit green screens? Hollywood should have mastered them by now. Transformers Rise of the Beast just felt like a lot of other Hollywood movies this year. A passionless cash grab that was meant to get the studio some quick and easy money. And well, it lost them money instead. And I'm glad, because I think it's about time we get something new from the Transformers franchise. Number 8. Five Nights at Freddy's. I did a Let's Watch video for this on my Patreon for Halloween, and you can see my thoughts and reactions to this movie there, but I really was not buying what it was selling. The writing felt off, the character interactions felt off, the PG-13 rating could have been pushed more, the film makes less sense the more you think about it, and it was just super forgettable. I liked what they were trying to do with the brother and his sister, but by the end, even that left very little impact. A lot of people liked it, but for me, I found it to be a very lousy and non-scary horror movie, which could work for young kids, but just not for me. Number seven, The Little Mermaid. Another heartless, soulless remake that didn't need to be made, with the selling point being that the main character 
is now black. Black girl magic! I know this was said as a joke, but I genuinely think that Disney believe in this. The gender politics were completely misguided and made you ask questions that you shouldn't have to, such as how many mermaids King Triton stuck his King Trident into, as well as many other burning questions that you want to ask. And I discussed these in my Little Mermaid vs video, so if you want to know my detailed thoughts on this movie, then you can check that out but I don't want to waste any more time talking about this thing. This was another crappy Disney remake, and it earns a spot on this list. Number 6. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny I already made an in-depth versus video on this too, so I recommend you watch that. Harrison Ford reprised his role as an iconic character after decades again, and he was a grumpy old man, again. His character doesn't go through an arc that felt worthy of another movie, he suddenly had a goddaughter who took up the majority of the film, who I found to be unlikable. I never saw Phoebe Waller Bridge before, saw her in this, and never want to see her again. How did you end up like this? I didn't care less about the characters, it killed off Mutt, which I thought was a wasted opportunity, and worst of all, I found the movie to be boring. My parents still have not watched the second half of this film yet, and they are the prime audience demographic for this. That really does say it all when even they can't sit through the rest of this trash heap. But yeah, another dud from Disney Lucasfilm, and Kathleen Kennedy's final nail in the coffin. According to Hollywood Insiders, Disney is trying to get rid of her, but hey, I don't care anymore, and it's Disney's problem. I'm moving on. Let's see what James Gunn does with DC, because I sure as heck have given up on Disney. Speaking of which, number 5, The Marvels. Yeah, we all knew this was going to end up on the list. We also knew this movie was a dumb idea from the very start, because Captain Marvel did not take off as a character, and lover or hater, Brie Larson has become a controversial figure and practically a meme at this point with her negative attitude. And when you take into account that we don't care about her, and then they throw a couple of other characters into the movie that audiences didn't care about either, add to that one of the biggest budgets ever for an MCU movie, and the result was a complete flop because no one wanted to see it. In fact, do you want to know how much of a flop it was? Aquaman 2 massively underperformed, but it beat the Marvel's entire box office run in its second weekend. And as far as the script goes, what script? This movie doesn't even know the meaning of the word. The characters had nothing to work with, the villains sucked, one of the worst MCU villains of all time, and those credit scenes were absolutely embarrassing. Marvel should be embarrassed and ashamed to introduce these popular characters through a credit scene for this piece of shit. Kamala Khan was the only saving grace, but even she couldn't save this train wreck. To no one's surprise, the movie flopped, and I knew it was going to, but it apparently really scared the pants off of Marvel into doing some changes, hence they have delayed all but one of their movies for 2024. But knowing them, they don't know how to make the right changes and will most likely continue doing the same shit. Only time will tell, but one thing I can tell you right now is that the Marvels definitely takes a spot as one of the worst movies of 2023. Number 4, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Now the Marvels is technically the worst film, but let's be honest, the Marvels had nothing going for it and it gave us nothing, which is kind of what we expected. But Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, it didn't have nothing. It had the next Thanos and they squandered it. Kang was completely botched and ultimately made for a generic MCU villain. If you want to know why I thought Kang was a terrible villain, then check out my video which is linked in the description. But aside from Kang, the characters were poorly developed, the CGI was atrocious, the recast for Cassie was misguided, and speaking of failed opportunities, this movie also had MODOK, and they couldn't have made him worse if they tried. Not only has this effect become a meme, but it is also the single most mocked image I've seen from comic book movies in a long time. And they took a villain that, much like Kang, had a ton of potential, and they completely wasted him. In my opinion, this is the movie that really killed the MCU, because this was the beginning of a brand new phase, Phase 5, and they are going to prove to us why we should care for this universe going forward. And this movie just proved that they've got nothing, and they learned nothing. And it's this movie that made the studio lose even hardcore fans and defenders of Marvel. Rather than reinvigorate the MCU, this movie just made people lose faith in it, and it left them lumbered with a villain that was just a big load of nothing. And that big load of nothing Nothing was supposed to be the next Thanos. Oh great, can't wait to see more of that. One thing you don't have to wait for though, is to see Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania take a spot on this list. Number 3, 
Knock at the Cabin. This had a great concept for a home invasion movie, but went for the most boring and pretentious execution. There were very obvious lapses in logic, and the movie did not trick me like it wanted to, and the whole illusion was just ruined. It's funny. Now that we've reached the end of the year, I can barely remember this movie, but I remember hating the way the characters talked and even the way they acted. The best actor of the movie was Dave Bautista, but even he was affected by the awkward direction of Shyamalan, as were the rest of the characters. Speaking of which, as far as M. Night's movies go, they are very hit and miss. The last great movie he made was Split, and I've seen that several times. But after that, he has directed stuff that goes from mediocre to downright garbage. When the movie was over, I just felt completely empty and like I had wasted my time. And this is the movie that just made me completely sick of M. Night's pretentious directing style. And the ending? I just rolled my eyes, and I found the whole movie to be laughable. What a waste. Number 2. Chicken Run 2. This is another movie I did an in-depth versus video on. Aside from the clever title, this was a completely uninspired sequel. It falls into many of the tropes that bad sequels do, they swapped out voice actors for the main characters, the plot is shockingly unoriginal, none of the jokes made me laugh, and this movie felt way longer than its hour and 26 minute runtime. The only thing I liked about this movie was the concept of the chicken nugget. That is a very funny idea, but the execution completely missed the mark. Yeah, this was another lifeless dud, and it hurt to see them take something so great and give it such a crap sequel. And aside from its impressive stop-motion animation, this was a terrible movie that should never have been made, and it definitely earns a top spot on this list. And the number one worst movie of 2023 is... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Now, I know what you're thinking, but let me preference this by saying, I am a huge Turtles fan. I grew up with the 2003 Turtles show, and it is by far my favourite interpretation. It has my favourite voice cast, favourite tone, favourite characters, favourite action, all of it. This is top tier Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It is a truly wonderful show. And the other bad movies that came out this year, those movies we, or at least I, already had very little faith in. Another live action Disney remake, a comic book movie no one asked for, a sequel without the original creators of voice talent, and countless others. These were telltale signs that they were going to disappoint. But with Seth Rogen attached to a new animated Turtles movie, and with his name on other fantastic superhero shows, as much as I was not impressed by the trailers, I thought this had potential. And I kind of got hyped for this movie at the last second after I watched Across the Spider-Verse and just wanted more of this animation. And then I eagerly anticipated and watched Mutant Mayhem and very quickly, it managed to rub this Turtles fan the wrong way in every way possible. After watching this, I am convinced that Seth Rogen just produces those other shows and his only contribution is to throw in a bunch of sex, nudity and gross out humour. And he filled this movie with all those immature jokes too, just on a PG level, and I didn't find any of it funny. The humour in this movie is just not my kind of humour, he clearly based the turtles on the kind of teenagers that he hung around with during his time, and I really can't stand those types of teenagers. Loud and obnoxious, these are not teenagers that I can relate to or have fun watching. On the contrary, these are the kinds of teenagers that I actively stayed away from in my life. My attitude towards these kinds of teens was, by all means, you do you, but I'm gonna go do my own thing, and that's how I felt about this movie. People say that the other versions of the Turtles are too mature and don't act like teenagers, and well, I disagree, because I used to be the mature kind of teenager, and so were the friends I used to hang out with, and me being the oldest of all my siblings, that's why I would always relate to Leonardo, but here, I just found them to be a nuisance. Jackie Chan as Splinter was an amazing idea to me, and it made so much sense, and once I saw the movie, I didn't like him either. He didn't have the earnestness and the strong authority that Splinter is known for having. They just made him a generic laid-back dad, and there was nothing about him that felt like Splinter to me. And I couldn't help but feel that he was sort of written like a stoner dad. And the gross-out humour they did with him, I just wanted to throw up any time he made out with this thing. Literally everything this movie attempted deviated from what I like about the turtles, and it felt like it was made for everyone but me. I didn't like these turtles, I didn't like the comedy, I didn't like the tone, I didn't like the constant hip-hop and rap songs they would use, and despite the great build-up, I didn't even like the villains. Superfly kills anyone who looks at him, 
I mean, okay, but why? He even kills a couple of guys that deliver some stuff to him because he shows himself to them. That was completely unnecessary, and when you finally see Superfly, he started out feeling threatening, but that very quickly went away when he started talking with a bunch of slang and hip-hop music kept playing. Again, he had a great build-up, but the execution was just too silly. And they even teased the Shredder at the end, and I just got a feeling of dread when I saw that. I really don't want to see what they do to him. The only point where I got invested in this movie was about halfway through the climax. The rap song stopped and the actual score for the movie came in and I was actually having some fun. But that's about where the fun stopped for me. I didn't even approve of the ending. These are just not my kind of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. These are just Seth Rogen and his friends in disguise, with a father figure who's high. And there was a lot of comedy improv going on in this movie and it was so lame. So if everyone likes it, then that's great. I'm not saying I hate this movie and I don't understand how others can like it. Not at all. But this movie just made me feel claustrophobic and uncomfortable to be in the same space. And it's a shame because at the last minute, I had so much hype for this movie because of Across the Spider-Verse. And in the end, it let me down so much that I couldn't even bring myself to review it after I had finished watching it. That has never happened to me before in my entire time of producing YouTube content. So if you enjoy this movie, that's great. I can totally see why people would enjoy this. But for me, this is definitely the most torturous experience I've had watching a movie in 2023. So, that's it for my top 10 worst movies list. Be sure to let me know of your worst of lists, and if you haven't, be sure to check out my best movies of 2023, which you can see on your screen now. Thanks as always for continuing to watch and support my channel guys, I really appreciate it. Stay tuned as I have plenty more videos on the way, both on my YouTube channel and my Patreon, including my coverage and comparison of Netflix's new Avatar The Last Airbender show, and I will catch all of you next time. Take care.